The Ukrainian offensive in Kursk region succeeded thanks to electronic warfare blitz that blinded Russian reconnaissance drones. Russia responds with drones immune to jamming. As Forbes writes, this is the first time such a weapon has been used on the battlefield and also a kind of warning for most countries that rely heavily on jamming to protect themselves from terrorist drone attacks. FPV drones need radio communication with the operator. So on the front line, you can see many jammers that knock out radio noise on selected frequencies. Effective electronic warfare means create a safe bubble in the region of 50 to 100 meters. So UAVs constantly change operating frequencies and the jammers themselves are updated. That's why a blitz attack like Kursk is needed with a long lead time to detect all frequencies and enough jamming to block everything in the area and stop all drones. For a while, the journalists explain. Radio communication requires line of sight and during the attack itself, the drones dive quite low. So at the last second, interference appears in the video signal, which impairs visibility. One solution to the jamming problem is terminal guidance using artificial intelligence. The operator locks on a target at a certain distance and the drone pursues it even if communication is lost. These systems are already being deployed in small numbers by both sides. Another approach is wire guidance. The drone reels in a fiber optic cable as it moves, similar to wire guided missiles like the TOW, the article says. Ukraine recorded a Russian prototype of a fiber optic drone back in March and recently Russian telegram channels showed footage of the use of of Prince Vandal Novgorodsky drones in the Kursk region. They are said to be immune to electronic warfare. Forbes previously reported that the German company HiCat is testing the HCX drone in Ukraine, which is resistant to radio frequency jamming and detection because it communicates with the operator via fiber optic cable. Back in March, Ukrainian developers announced the appearance of a fiber optic FPV drone called Banderik Strichka. A missile attack was launched in the Rostov region of Russia. Local telegram channels reported on this. It is noted that on the night of August 21, units of the Ukrainian Navy, in coordination with other defense forces components, struck an S-300 anti-aircraft missile system near the town of Novoshaktinsk in Russia's Rostov region, citing the Ukrainian general staff. The military confirmed that explosions were observed at the target locations, and the accuracy of the strikes is currently being further assessed. Russian forces frequently use S-300 systems not only for air defense but also to attack civilian cities in Ukraine, leading to the destruction of residential buildings and terrorizing the civilian population. Russian propagandists are starting to flee occupied Crimea fearing for their lives. Local Z writer Platon Bezedin stated in his Telegram channel that informed sources are recommending that he leave Sevastopol since the city is expecting big and difficult events in the near future. Bezedin hints that war-related events will cover Sevastopol. The propagandist did not directly state what exactly will happen in the near future, but in the comments under his post, people are seriously worried. Bezedin claims that the Russian occupation administration will not be able to help the civilian population, so they better take care of themselves. But I will say, dear Sevastopol and Crimean residents, take care of yourselves, please. Take care, especially now. And remember, the situation, unfortunately, has been developing for a long time now in such a way that only you can help yourself. But also remember about your neighbors and loved ones. The city is on the eve of big and difficult events. Strength to all. We are on the eve, he writes. The occupied peninsula has been repeatedly targeted by Ukrainian drone and naval strikes. 
forcing Russian forces to withdraw much of its naval power and strengthen its air defenses. Ukraine is making it increasingly difficult for Russia to hang on to illegally annexed Crimea thanks to an ongoing campaign that's targeting air defenses, rail links and water connections. The peninsula's air defenses have also been degraded with constant attack. Russian Federation occupying authorities in Crimea have consistently suppressed freedom of expression, including by members of minority cultures and identities, and severely curtailed the freedom of religion of minority groups, particularly those opposing official narratives, most notably the Medleys. The space for civil society to operate, criticize or advocate has considerably shrunk. Media outlets have been shut down, disproportionately affecting Crimean Tatar and Ukrainian communities, their rights to freedom of expression and access to information, and to enjoy and maintain their own cultures and identities.